Hello, my name is Naomi Rivera. I'm a coach with the KEYS program. KEYS is the quality early education system. We provide in-classroom quality support to early childhood teachers and providers. We are generously funded by the Children's Board of Hillsborough County in partnership with programs such as Calm and Elm, as well as HCC and Child Care Licensing. What I'd like to do today is to share some quick tips, some practical ideas, and how to arrange a preschool classroom. Some things that I want you to consider as we're going through these slides is think about the activity and the noise level of each center in your classroom. Think about the size and the space that you're going to be using. Are you using a, a small classroom, a small family childcare home, or do you have a large room that you're able to use? Can the children move freely and safely in and out of the centers? And what are some of the permanent fixtures in your classroom, things that cannot be moved, such as a sink, doors, windows? I want you to think about um, the centers that have um, different levels of activities. We have high traffic areas, that means that there's more noise. We have low traffic areas, which means that they're oftentimes quieter. Centers that are busy include your dramatic play area, your housekeeping area. These centers are usually used for developing um, our large motor skills. They usually require more space. And more space means more children. More children means more noise. Uh, think about your centers that are less busy, that include uh, individual children or smaller groups. That's your library, your art, your math. These are less traffic, there's less movement. Children are either sitting reading a book, they're standing at the art easel, they may be taking the toys to a table if they're playing in math and science. There's usually less children, there's less traffic, less noise. Here's some examples of what a loud and active area looks like. We have a dramatic play, we have blocks, these allow for multiple children to move in and out. As you can see, there are larger spaces, which allow for more children, which means more noise. And what do we want to do with these loud and active centers? We want to place them side by side as much as possible. If we can't put them near each other, put them as close as possible. These are usually our most inviting centers. These are our most popular areas, so more children are going to want to be in these areas, and we should arrange it in such a way to allow children to fit in these spaces with ample space. When we're thinking about our loud and active areas, I also want to think about our musical instruments. Oftentimes, our instruments are used for only specific purposes. They're only brought out for music and movement activities or a teacher-directed activity. We want children to be able to have access to instruments throughout the day. We want them to be able to create rhythms and sounds. We want them to be creative and explore on their own. Consider combining your music area with your dramatic play. Consider this a role-playing activity. Here's an example of what our quiet and individual areas look like. We have a listening center. We have a, a quiet box or a quiet area. These are our very low traffic, um, calm areas. Maybe your calm or your quiet area is just a bean bag and some pillows. You decide what's gonna be most effective for your center. If you don't have a, a listening center, Maybe you have an easel where only one child stands. Maybe it's a sensory bin where only one child plays at a time. These areas have fewer children. There's less noise in them. And just like our, our loud areas, we want these centers to be as close as possible, if not side by side. We want our areas to be near each other. I want you to consider the setup of these spaces and what it tells children to do. If you look at the setup of the listening center, there's one chair to the table, which will let the child know only one child can be there. The quiet area or this quiet box is small enough for only one child to go there at a time. We're thinking about combining our loud and active centers. We're thinking about combining our quiet centers. When you're considering some of the other centers in your room, think about the, the concepts that are able to cross over. Think about 
your math and science area. You're observing, you're measuring, you're weighing. Those are concepts that go together. You can put those centers near each other. Think about your science and your sensory area. You could probably combine those centers, put them near each other. Your writing and your literacy center, those centers can be combined or put close by each other. So we've situated our quiet centers, we've situated our loud centers. What about those in-between centers? What about the centers that they're not individual students sitting by themselves and they're also not very high mobility? It's somewhere in the middle. Students are still engaging, they're still bringing toys maybe to the table or to the floor, they're talking with their friends, they're engaging. These centers are what we call our neutral and our in-between centers. We're gonna to try to place those areas kind of in the middle where they can separate our quiet spaces and our loud spaces. Those are usually your writing center, literacy, your table toys, your manipulatives. These are centers that we're gonna to wanna to place right down the center in order to separate um, the two extremes. So when you're arranging your classroom, consider how are the children going to recognize the areas? Are there defined boundaries? Are there clear pathways for walking and moving? We usually do this with the furniture that's in the room. We arrange our shelves. As you can see, these shelves are low. The teachers can see over them. The students can see over them. But they're placed strategically in L shapes or freestanding so that the centers are defined. The areas are separated. Our children at this age are usually not able to read, so we want to help them identify the centers by placing pictures and signs in each area so they know where to go. We also want to use furniture and materials as focal points. We have carpets to define areas. We have a table that gives children a focal point and a place to go to when they're using the materials. So let's think about our smaller spaces. Usually our family childcare homes uh, are not working with the same amount of space as in a traditional preschool classroom, but we can still apply the same concepts. These are our smaller spaces, and in this small space, we're seeing that the loud and active areas are also next to each other. They've placed the dramatic play in the blocks near each other. They're using the furniture to divide the spaces. They're using baskets to divide the areas. There's clear areas. You can see the clearly defined spaces. You can see the pathways where children can move in and out. You see that a table is used as a focal point for the dramatic play. You can also see signs on the wall that have pictures to let the children know what area it is that they're playing in. And here's an example of a quiet space in our family childcare home. As you can see, the teacher has combined the circle time, the library area, and the table toy area. Large and small spaces can be manipulated just to serve your purpose. If you know you don't have enough space, be creative. Remember combining uh, liked concepts, concepts that can cross over. Your quiet areas can be close together. Your loud areas can be close together if not combined completely. So what's going to make this a useful space is the teacher's interaction with the children. How are they playing? What are we using? What are your words? What are some of the things that you're talking about in these spaces? You should always be able to provide a rich and intentional experience no matter what the space is. In this family child care home, we can see how they use the furniture to create boundaries and pathways. You can see the clearly defined space. The furniture is strategically placed in order to create um, areas. You can see the defined spaces. They've used a cushion probably to absorb sound and also to define that area. It's a focal point where children know that they can direct themselves to that area. You can see where the movement should be. You can see how children are gonna move in and out of these, these spaces. Um, consider the functionality of your spaces as well. Can children reach the materials easily and safely? Are there any obstructions in their way? Are there any hazards in their way? You can see that there's nothing on the floor blocking them. There's no shelves that they have to climb over. They can freely move in and out of these areas. 
And last but never least, let's think about our messy centers. This is usually our art area, our sensory area. We're gonna have shaving cream, this is paint area, sand and water. All these areas are absolutely necessary for the development of young children. We need to allow children to have opportunities to get messy, to play in these type of sensory areas. We want them to develop their fine motor skills, their creativity, we want them to develop their self-expression and try to aim for these areas to be by a sink, to be somewhere where they can easily wash their hands before they play in the sand and water, to be able to clean up the paint that they're using. We want to be able to foster independence. Some other things to consider are the placement of the, the fixed um, fixtures in the room. The sink is something that cannot be moved. It's usually in one spot and you should arrange your, your areas accordingly, putting your furniture close to that space. Think about the doors. Are they going to swing open into, your, into one of your centers? Should you move that area? Think about where your window is. Where would you like the most natural light in your home living? Would you like it in your library area? Some, some of those things are good uh, to consider. So in conclusion, just some things to remember, just a quick recap. We want our loud and our active centers together. We want our quiet uh, individual or small group areas together. Put your quiet and your loud active centers in separate parts of the room as far away as possible. We want our neutral centers with um, mild mobility to be right in the middle. Use those as ways to divide the space up. If you're limited on space, be creative. Combine your centers with light concepts, which are your loud areas together, your quiet areas together, um, the concepts of, of math and science, you can put them together, music and your dramatic play. Use your furniture to create clear boundaries, use pictures, use signs, um, make sure that there's nothing in the way that the children are, are able to move freely and safely in and out of their centers. And remember that the messy centers are important. They're essential. Place them near a sink for easy cleanup. And on behalf of our Keys family, we want to thank you for your time and good luck.